Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We've studied ideals and commutative rings extensively. We need to be a little more careful while studying ideals in non-commutative rings. The slight complication arises because a multiplication doesn't commute and there are two different flavors of ideals. There are left ideals and right ideals. So a left ideal is just a additive subgroup of R. So it's a subset of R uh, that is closed under addition, contains zero and has additive inverses. So this part is the same as in the definition of the ideal, but the additional condition is that uh, Rx belongs to I for all x in I and R in R. Now this condition looks exactly the same as the definition of an ideal in a commutative ring, but there's a different uh, variant of this where we will put the R on the right. So a right ideal again is an additive subgroup of R. such that x r belongs to i for all x in i and r in r. And then finally we have the notion of a two-sided ideal. A two-sided ideal is just an ideal which is a left ideal and a right ideal. In a commutative ring, these three notions all coincide. Left ideals are the same as right ideals and they are all two-sided ideals. Let R be the ring of n by n matrices. I'll just call it M, N, K. All n by n matrices with entries in a field K. So we assume that K is a field and R forms a ring under matrix addition and matrix multiplication. So now for a matrix A in R, I'll use the following notation. Aij denotes the element in the ith row, the entry in the ith row and jth column of R the ijth entry of, of A and I'll use A i star to denote the ith row of A. So you think of it as a row vector and A star j will be the jth column of A, column vector and I'll use the notation R of A to denote the row space of A. So that's the span of A i star i goes between 1 and n and similarly C of A will be used to denote the column space of A. That is span of A star j 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n. Now we'll try to figure out what are the left ideals, the right ideals and the two-sided ideals in R. So firstly let me give you a construction of some left ideals and right ideals. So let V be any subspace of K to the N and then we can define two subsets of R. We'll define R of V 
to be those matrices A such that the row space of A is contained in B. And we'll define C of B to be those matrices A in R such that column space of A is contained in B. Okay, now recall an important fact from linear algebra that the row space of A, B is contained in the row space of B and the column space of A, B is contained in the column space of A. So what this means is that you take any matrix whose row space is contained in B and you multiply it on the left by another matrix then the product matrix will still have row space contained in B. So that means that this is a left ideal and here if you have a matrix whose column space is contained in V and you multiply it on the right by another matrix then the column space of the product is still contained in V. So that means that this is a right ideal. It turns out that these are all the left and right ideals of R. How do we see that? So to see that we need to um, given an I left ideal, let's let's do it for left ideals. So given I in R a left ideal, we need to identify the subspace V for which this ideal I is of the form R V. So how would we how would we get that subspace V? Well, an obvious choice if you think about it a bit is to let V be the span of the row spaces of all the matrices in I. So you take all A in I and you take all I between 1 and N. Okay, so this is of course a huge infinite set usually uh, but it's going to be a subspace of K to the N. It's going to be a finite dimensional vector space and it's going to be generated spanned by a finite set of such rows okay and now what I want to show is that I is actually equal to R of V okay so firstly uh, if you have a vector um, if you have an, a matrix A in I then uh, of course uh, the row space of A is going to be contained in B. So, so because that's one of the matrices whose rows span B. So if A belongs to I, then row space of A is contained in B, which implies that A belongs to RB. So what this says is that I is contained in RB. What we need to show is that the other inclusion is true, that Rv is contained in I. Okay, so suppose A belongs to Rv. Then each row of A, so in particular row space of A is contained in V and uh, which means that each row of A lies in V. Okay, so that means that uh, there, if I take the i row of V A i star, I can write it as a linear combination of uh, rows of matrices uh, which lie in I. So I can write this in the form j goes from 1 to k i goes from let's say l goes from 1 to n b j i l a i star j. so this is just what it means to say that a i star is in the span of the rows of matrices in I 
where these a1 a2 up to ak belong to i okay but if you think about what this means this is the same as saying that a itself is summation j goes from 1 to k b j a j where b j is the matrix whose i l th entry is b j i l okay now if you look at this equation here a is equal to summation b j a j it's exactly saying that a lies in the left ideal that can that um, you know, lies in the left ideal containing a1 a2 up to al which means that a lies in i in uh, so what we've proved is that rv is contained in i and so rv is equal to i so this shows that every uh, left ideal in r is of the form rv for some vector space, subspace v of kn and a similar reasoning using columns instead of rows will show that every right ideal is of the form cv for some subspace v of k to the n what about two sided ideals in r so suppose i is a two sided ideal in r Okay, then um, I is of course going to be of the form C of V for some subspace V in Kn. Okay, now consider two cases. Firstly, if V is the zero dimensional subspace, so if V is just the subspace consisting of the single vector zero, then of course um, I is 0 itself consists only of the 0 matrix just by the definition of cv now if v is not 0 then take some non-zero vector v in v okay and now let's look at the matrix a j the matrix whose j row is v uh, not capital v is the is the vector v and all other rows are zero so this matrix aj looks like something like this in the jth row we have the vector v and everywhere else we have zero so now i ask you what is the row space of aj the row space of aj is the subspace spanned by the rows of a at least one of these coordinates in v is non zero and so the row space of aj is going to be the jth coordinate line so this means that um, okay so firstly aj belongs to um, i for all i uh, for all j between 1 and n just because uh, the column space of aj is contained in the subspace capital v but on the other hand the span of aj i star one less than or equal to i less than or equal to n is all of k k to the n because it contains each of the coordinate lines so that means that uh, by the argument that we had earlier right when you have a left ideal it is r of v where v is the space spanned by the rows of all the matrices in that ideal so that means i is equal to c of k to the n which is all of 
एम एन की दैट इज ऑल ऑफ आर सो वॉट वी हैव सीन हियर इज दैट दे ओनली टू टू साइडेड आइडियल्स इन आर नेमली द आइडियल कंसिस्टिंग ओनली ऑफ द जीरो मेट्रिक्स एंड द अदर वन इज द आइडियल कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ ऑल मेट्रिक इन आर लेट क्यू बी अ क्विवर सो इट्स ऑफ द फॉर्म वी ई एस टी where v is a set of vertices e is a set of edges s is the source function uh, tells you where each edge starts and t is the uh, target function tells you where each edge ends and the path algebra if you remember this is as a vector space it's spanned by all the paths in q Now I'll give you some examples of left ideals, right ideals, and two-sided ideals in KQ. So fix a subset S of V, and you define I of S to be the span of all paths with source in S. So this is span of paths P in E star such that source of P belongs to S. And similarly, I define J of S to be span of all paths that end in S. So this is span. of p in e star such that t of p belongs to s i claim that this is a left ideal is is a left ideal in kq and this is a right ideal in kq and if you want an example of a two sided ideal in kq you just define n of s to be span of all paths of length greater than 0 all paths of positive length. remember the path algebra the the set of paths also consists of paths of length 0 one for each uh, vertex of the quiver now if you look at the span of paths of positive length you can show that they form a two sided ideal so you should try to prove these three assertions uh, about left ideals right ideals and two sided ideals in the path algebra of a quiver